I, before I get started, I would like to acknowledge two of my colleagues from UC Berkeley. Um, Joyce Gross, whose beautiful pictures of live insects and live galls uh, will, are mostly in my talk. <laughs> Very few of these photos are mine. And uh, Diane M. Irwin, whose fossil photos also are in my talk. Um, we'll start with a few definitions. Plant galls um, are actually basically plant tissue, entirely formed by a plant. It's not a normal plant organ, and it's caused by stimulus from another living organism. Host plants, in the cases we're talking about, are the organism that actually forms the gall in response to the stimulus, and in this case, it's the oak tree. The gall wasp, and I'm going to be the referring to gall wasp as anything in the family Cynipidae. Now you'll see there are two different tribes. Some are the gall inducers and some are influence, not nice. We'll see that. Um, and then finally, oh, sesodology, which is the study of gall biology. Okay, gall wasps um, are in the family Hymenoptera, uh, in the order Hymenoptera family Cynipidae. Um, they form galls with uh, separate tissue layers, distinctive tissue layers, always with a central chamber. There are such things as gall flies, a whole family, which, like the Cynipidae family, are found only in galls. But this is about gall walks, not gall flies. Well, you can see this red fly gall on a willow. And I'm not to be insulting on flies, but <laughs> that's not this talk. Um, most of the gall flies actually form very simple galls. A single kind of tissue, usually just a roll and fold. Okay, so the other thing about gall wasps, and true of actually gall flies as well, is many of them are very small. Consequently, there are a lot of species right around here that we know about. We've seen them. We do not have a scientific name for them. They haven't been described. Okay, so here's a picture of a typical oak gall from a wasp. And <clears throat> this shows tissue layers. Part works. Here we go, the pointer works anyway. Um, the tissue layers have an internal chamber and then tissue here on the outside. Some are much more complex than this. All right. I said that there were several tribes in the family Cynipidae, but we're only going to be looking at two. We'll be looking at the oak gallers, and we'll be looking at the inquilins, the cytogenes. All right, so we look at the host plant here. Um, oak trees in the genus Quercus in California actually cover three different sections of that genus. And that's the white oaks, which we'll be talking about, the valley oak, lobata, and the blue oak, um, Douglasia. Uh, we'll be talking about black oaks, the second section, and only agrifolia, the coast live oak. And then finally, we'll be talking about galls or seeing galls on the canyon oaks, the intermediate oaks. All right, starting with the valley oaks. This is the point at which you have to fasten your seatbelt because I've got to get through a lot of slides in a hurry. Hopefully you'll think that they're, they're worth seeing. All right, this is a stem gall, the most common you'll see, and you'll see it all over. Val uh, valley oak trees, almost all uh, groves will have at least some of these large galls. They get as big as soft galls. They're green in the spring, and you can have up to 16 separate wasp gall inducers in here. Um, they exit through an exit hole in the fall, and you'll see this is a picture of the adult wasp coming out. Uh, typically, the larvae live inside because the egg is laid inside, plant tissue, and the whole gall grows in response to the larva, larval secretions. And then we have pupation happening inside the gall. So the only actual stage, life stage, you'll ever see is the adult wasp, the small thing that flies for a few days and then dies. Here's one 
um, also a stem gall on Valley Oak. And this is a honeydew gall, much smaller, and only a single uh, individual will be inside with them. Here's another kind of gall. This is on the leaf, and these red uh, cone galls form in late summer, and then in the fall, they fade into beige. You can cut them open with your thumbnail, di quick dissection with a thumb, and have an adult wasp already there. If you don't touch the gall, she won't come out until spring, probably March. Here's some more leaf galls. You'll notice all of the leaf galls so far, and the next one I show you, are species in the genus Andricus. But you'll notice that the host plant species is the same. On a single oak tree, you can have lots of different species of galls, even on a single leaf. This is a little different. Um, all the leaf galls I've shown you so far are fall galls. They grow at the end of the summer. Um, this one is the same seasonality, but unlike the other three galls you've seen on leaves, this, each lobe, bulge, <laughs> has a separate wasp larva. So there look to be at least six or eight inside here. All right, so we've looked at a single genus of leaf galls so far on Valley Oak. We're still on the same host oak species, but now we're looking at other genera. There's lots of diversity still looking at leaf galls. We've only gotten two parts of the plant galled. Um, we're starting here, A, Antron de Blasii. The, the Antron is uh, the, the spiny turban gall, working our way around all the way to Xantha Terry's, the club gall. And you can recognize these. So there's the spiny turban, and here's the club. Keep the spiny turban in mind, we'll see them again. All right, probably the most interesting, but also one of the tiniest of galls, is Neurotus fer uh, ferreteris, the salt choice, the um, leaf gall, which is known as the California jumping gall. These guys have formed, okay, here I've circled where they've actually fallen off. This, each one of these has one single female wasp inside, and these have already fallen off. What's happened is they've fallen on the ground and they actually will jump up and down until the larva has started to pupate. And now we're into another plant organ. We are seeing a bud gall. This forms a rosette. And now I need to tell you <laughs> about alternating generations because we're still looking at the same host plant. But so far, all the galls we've looked at form in the fall. And they're, they're of longer duration, and they mostly have only females. So I'm going to go through a typical alternating generation sequence. Uh, most of them last one year. We start up here with the uh, spiny turban pink gall that you saw earlier. This is a leaf gall. And in January, or, or a little bit later, we'll get only females emerging. Those females will lay eggs in buds, and that will form a special, sort of a very, uh, it looks like a, a berry, a berry-like gall on the bud, but the wasps inside will be either male or female. And then they emerge, make in the, oh, whoops, what happened here? Um, in, in the emerger mate in um, uh, about April, and that's when they'll lay their eggs into the leaves and start the whole process of forming the pink spiny turban again. So you see that it's alternating generations to a year. All right, so here you see pictures of them, and notice, whoops, let's keep happening. Notice this uh, female will not be exactly the same as the females that come out of this gall. Slightly morphologically different. She's a different generation. Okay, this is just a plea for more research. 
In Europe, we know golf a lot better. They have more people and better funding. In California, we don't. See how poorly we know them. We have more trees and more species, but we don't know them. And here's a few we don't know, okay? The three different species of spring galls, all in one photograph. This gall goes on both sides of the leaves. It's sort of a rosette. Here we have a swollen petiole. And finally, here's a blister gall. And no, we don't know, have species names or know the match of uh, generation. Finally, we've progressed away from valley oak. Now we're on blue oak. We're going to see a few pictures. Here is some beautiful leaf gall. Now we're going to go to the next section um, and coast live oak. We've got here one of the few that we do know, and here we've got a male coming out of the spring generation bud gall, probably March, and this is on uh, live oak. And we know that this, the females, not this guy, but the female he mates with will lay her egg in a leaf and form this little bicornic dubiosus gall. Here are a few detachable galls also from the uh, coast live oak. And a root gall. We haven't seen a root gall before from coast live oak. And now we're finally at the last section, um, and this is on Quercus chrysolopus. And you can see we have a lot of interesting varieties. My favorite here is the spindle gall. The spindle gall looks like that when all we have is a normal gall inducer. But you'll see that if it has an ink pulling, it will change drastically. Okay, so what's in an oak gall? Well, it could be the gall inducer. You have to have a gall inducer to get started. But you could also have something from another tribe. You could have an ink pulling. These are uninvited guests that can't form their own gall, so they go into another gall and eat the plant tissue. Now, last of all, you could actually have a parasitoid. This is a wasp from another family who's only after parasitizing one of the other two gall wasp larvae. Here's a gall inducer uh, larva. You can tell it's a gall inducer because it's just a naked little hairless uh, white thing. If it had hair, we would know it was a parasitoid. And here's some um, influence. And this is a change in shape on that beautiful uh, spindle gall. Look how deformed it looks when it's covered, as in the lower right, uh, with the inquilins. Here's some parasitoid. And this is my very favorite parasitoid. Her ovipositor is twice the body length, three times, more than three times the body length, but she also has it reinforced with metal. <laughs> she has to, well, she needs to sequester the metal so she can drill right into those big galls and lay, inject her egg into the gall wasp larva. Okay, so how long have galls been around? Well, we're going to go turn to the fossil record for that. Mostly it's leaves preserved, and mostly these are carbon impression galls. We, um, we have very little lithified woody material, and even fewer, in fact virtually none until quite recently, amber galls. And they are very recent material, nothing old. So here are some fossil galls. Um, these are, are all um, from mid-Miocene, I think. Um, and they're all Western. So these are the, probably the ancestors of gall wasps and galls you see today. These are on fossil oaks, by the way, you might notice, not currently residing here. And uh, these are some older species. And more recently, we've described some new species um, from other fossil oaks. So they've been around a long time. They don't look like much. They probably weren't as specialized. But most importantly and most excitingly, we have new three-dimensional walls from the tar pit. And I'm just going to quickly show you them. From Rancho La Brea, 
You can see in the um, upper right here is the modern Gaul that is, that is the one on the upper left. Okay, more of the modern Gauls on the right and the uh, uh, Rancho La Brea Gauls on the left. And then finally we come to an undescribed species, which later we found right near La Brea tar pits. This is a species nobody's seen before, and it turns out to be a jumping kind of gall, but it's not the same as our jumping gall, modern jumping gall. And we never discovered this until after we found the fossils. So, conclusion. <laughs> There's a lot of diversity, and we need to study these a lot more. Thank you. I guess there's still time.